Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Brad. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Duel Links video. Today, we have another leak video for you guys. We're going to be covering some new cards, some new campaigns, as well as the June ranked rewards 100% confirmed. Before we get into the leaks video, if you do enjoy any point in this video, feel free to leave a like and feel free to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you uh, want to stay up to date on uh, the latest Duel Links leaks and content from me. Uh, YouTube is currently shitting their own system and. Uh, Hitting that notification bell is a bit more important than ever. So, uh, yeah, with that, with, with all of that technical bullshit out of the way, let's go on to the leak. Starting with the Yugi Muto birthday campaign. So you might remember they did this last year. They gave us on June fourth. They gave us a playmat, some card sleeves, and up to 640 gems. So this year, expect them to do something similar. We don't have any details as to what it can entail. There won't be a new game mat or sleeves, I don't think, considering this is so close to happening. And we didn't get any new game mats or sleeves in the game that aren't acquirable already. I think we'll be getting the Magnet Warrior sleeves and play mat again for free. Maybe they'll give us, you know, some additional in-game items. But, you know, just go in, potentially expect some gems, and you'll be very, very happy indeed. Next, we have a World Championship Qualifier Sale campaign coming soon. The final, like the qualifiers part of the World Championship event that's on currently... Uh, that starts on the 8th of June, so this is probably going to come up around that same sort of time. I would not be surprised if the 3 packs plus 1 ultra rare card came back, which means you might want to save up a little bit of cash so you can splurge on literally every box in the game and get some cheap URs. That could be a cool idea. Um, of course, hopefully we'll find out closer to the time. And now there are some other sale campaigns. So currently in the game, we do have a similar sort of sale to this one. I'm actually going to... You can hear me click on it right now and going into the game but uh, we have the vagrants have been added celebration underway sale now this sale actually encompasses the boosted dual orbs and master gate keys 50% off sale however it does not include the accessory sale the accessories I believe are all the same prices they I hope they're all the same prices I'm actually checking right now yes yeah, so they've added new accessories for sale um, okay they have actually put sales some accessories up on sale prices so Completely ignore that, but they have individual art for all of these uh, these uh, new sales, and so you know in the future we'll probably see some more sales on those items only, rather than just the giant generic overall sale we're getting right now. But let's get into the thing you guys all came here for, and that is the cards. Starting with uh, some new event cards, is going to be uh, login campaigns or duelathon thing, things like that. Starting with Cybernetic Zone, if you remember from the Tristan video we did, Tristan actually has voice lines for this card. Select one face up machine type fusion monster you control and remove it from play until the end phase of this turn. When that monster is returned to the field, double its attack. Destroy, doing your next standby phase, destroy it. So, I was kind of, you know, wary about this one because I still don't understand its quick play, which means surely you would use it, you know, during like maybe your opponent's turn to guarantee it survives. But it will still die during the next standby phase, so I'm kind of I'm wondering whether there's gonna, there's some other cards in the game that kind of rely on you know being destroyed by a card effect that could work very well with Cybernetic Zone. Again, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Let me know what you could see for this. Of course, you know doubling uh, some Cyber Dragon attack or some Vehicle attack would be a very nice uh, thing for this. Of course, the Robo Yaro cards definitely need their attack doubled. But uh, but regardless. Could be a cool card if we can find out some nice combinations to use it with, but I don't see it seeing too much play given it is just a standard rare. Next, we have Damage Polarizer. I believe this is a card that Zane used, or there was a similar sort of card that Zane used. Activate only when an effect that inflicts damage is activated. Negate its activation if you an effect, and each player draws one card. So, this I don't see seeing much play at all either because we don't really have anything that you know inflicts damage other than. You know, standard burn, and that's not really that common anymore. Like Lava Golem burn, you will still see on the ladder, but there is no way you should tech in a card into your deck that uh, is going to stop damage being inflicted by effects. This just doesn't seem like that great of a card, and it does give your opponent a bit of an advantage as well. Of course, it does let you survive uh, the turn potentially, but uh, it gives your card, your opponent, a free card. Of course, they can't use that immediately unless it is a quick play spell, but uh, just. It's just a bit meh, I think, in my opinion. Next, we have Infernal Dragon. I believe... I believe this is one of Zane's cards. I believe he used it with his Cyberdarks. 
Once per turn, during the end phase, if this card attacked this turn, destroy this card. When this card on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you contribute one monster, special summon this card from your graveyard. So, it has like high cost to keep up on the field, which is a bit of a shame. But it's a 2000 point monster, it, you literally you're going to use it to go in. Uh, it's in the graveyard, so once we do get Cyberdark support, it's then kind of the, that right target for the Cyberdark Dragon. Uh, which is which is really nice. Of course, Zane is coming back at some point in June, so this could be a nice little segue for them to introduce the Cyber Dark support and give you a very nice prime target for Cyber Dark Dragon, which would be really cool if they did that. But uh, what decks special summon monsters quickly and like being tripped? Maybe Heretics. Maybe Heretics would work with this card. I don't know. We'll have to see. But Infernal Dragon is one of those cards that is a. Uh, it's just really cool, it has one of the best dragon designs I think of any card in the game, and uh, just a very sexy looking card. Next we have Heavy Slump, if your opponent has 8 or more cards in the hand, they shuffle their entire hand into the deck, then draw 2 cards. So, I don't see this being used at all, because right now what do we have that you know gives you card advantage in that kind of way? We don't really have anything, unless you're playing a Slifer deck, then... That's the only really chance you can have of this. Maybe against the Vagabond with the starting with seven cards challenge and you run dual standby so you get eight. Maybe that's where this will see play. I don't know. Um, but it, it still just kind of screams as mediocre and not going to be used. Not very good. So, uh, not looking forward to that one. Eternal Rest. This was originally in like Labyrinth of Nightmare or Legacy of Darkness. One of those two. A very, very old card. I remember getting this as a kid. Super rare, destroy all monsters with equipped equipped with equipped with cards. So, you know what this is going to be for? This is going to be to get rid of those pesky noble knights. Uh, you know, we, we just got them. They're a pretty cool archetype. I still haven't, you know, gotten him through one whole box of that set yet because it is just giving me the shittest luck possible. But uh, anything that can kind of disadvantage those decks, I'm all for. Thunder Rest could be a cool super rare. Probably going to get it from a Duel of Thon or something like that. Which, uh, which would be really nice. Of course, these could all be card trade cards as well. So again, keep an eye on that. Next, we have the Ranked Dual Rewards for June. So these are all cards coming in the Ranked Reward uh, selection. We did get one of these actually leaked thanks to the uh, the current World Championship Qualifier event going on. Of course, you can get Super Rare and Ultra Rare Prismatic tickets and one of those cards did, did get leaked. So we're finally going to be able to get at least a third copy of Gravekeeper's Vassal. So if you didn't know, Vassal was only available through uh, the Tour Guide Duelist Challenges, as well as one copy via the Shizu uh, Level Up Rewards. So getting a third copy of Vassal is not needed at all, but for people who don't really want to farm out through a Shizu or something like that, this could be a nice way of uh, allowing people to access that card. It is a very important farming card, so nice it's finally getting put into the ranked ladder. Horus' Servant, this is a brand new card. Your opponent cannot target face up Horus the Black Flame Dragon Monsters, with spell, traps, or card effects. This is stupid. You really would have thought that this would have come out with Horus in that GX box, the uh, next generation box, or generation next thing it was, but for some reason it didn't. I always found that kind of weird. But uh, cool, we're getting it now. It is really bad, though. It's not going to survive anything on its own. It's incredibly, incredibly low stat, and just. You've got Horus on the field anyway. Your opponent is most likely going to be able to do not a lot because this meta is so spell heavy. So this doesn't seem to be an essential card for me at all right now. Next we have Death of Alt Scalf. Of course we have this already thanks to I believe it was one of the Duelist Chronicles events. So uh, if you weren't here for that event you want to pick this card up. It's going to be a rank reward card. Not too bad, not too bad. Throw Stone Unit, this is the one that is actually uh, available in the KC Cup tickets, that's kind of cool. Offer one warrior type monster on your side of the field as tribute. Destroy one face of monster on the field whose defense is equal to or less than the attack of this card. So, this has actually been errata to say tribute one warrior type monster you control or on your side of the field to destroy one face of monster on the field whose defense is equal to or less than the attack of this card. So, this can be attributing itself. Um, but I just, I'm not too sure I see a use for this because 900 defense is pretty weak and any decent warrior monster is probably going to have more than 900 defense. Uh, it's just, it's 
kind of one of those cards they probably felt like they could throw in because, pardon the pun, uh, just because it's not great at all and it's just like, okay, here's a super rare we can kind of put in, no one really wants it in a box, let's give it to them as a part of their free-to-play offerings. So uh, unless someone comes up with a really interesting strategy, then uh, like if, if there's a card that lets you put all the attack points of, of a monster on the field to like zero or something, that'd be really, really cool. And finally, the most hype card, this card's been in the game for a very long time, Silent Doom, a target one, normal monster in your graveyard, special summon it in face-up defense mode, but it cannot attack. This card was used by Kaiba back in anime, and it's a really powerful card. Of course, I can see this being used right away in Dark Magician decks, because you kind of want to get that boy out on the field as quick as possible, and that deck is kind of lacking some kind of graveyard uh, summoning mechanic apart from uh, Swing of Memories. This is a nice alternative to that, and doesn't destroy the monster during the end phase, so very, very cool gonna look forward to see how Silent Doom gets implemented of course not many normal monsters in the game are meta but uh, this will be really interesting to see what decks can come from playing this card but that is it for today's Dawn's video guys did enjoy let me know your thoughts on these leaks in the comment section down below thanks for watching don't forget to leave that uh, to ring that bell you know for, for, uh, for notifications on whenever I uh, upload a video whenever I live stream there might be a stream today I'm not too sure if I'm gonna do one or not uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next Dawn's Links video See you then. And we're going to be professional here and play the outro now.